Just an inquest has been hearing how a teenage soldier from near Newmarket died in an explosion as he searched a compound in Afghanistan. Private Robert Hayes of the 1st Battalion, Royal Anglians, was just 19 when he became the first British serviceman to die in the conflict this year. Stuart Leeds reports. Private Robert Hayes' mother, Diane Baldwin, was at the inquest in Wisbeach today, as was his father, Stephen Hayes, to hear the details of his death while on patrol in Afghanistan. The 19-year-old from Burwell near Newmarket was killed by an improvised explosive device, or IED, in January. He was using a metal detector to lead the search of a deserted compound near their base at Nad-e Ali, from which his patrol had come under fire from insurgents. The court was shown a plan of Compound 33, as it was known, which showed the tower Private Hayes was searching when he triggered the device and some of Private Hayes' colleagues gave their account of the incident. The court heard from Corporal Joseph Warren, who was just a few feet away from Private Hayes when the explosion went off and the tower collapsed. He said, I just heard a sharp crack, and the next thing I recall is complete blackness and ringing in my ears. I couldn't move, I couldn't see. I knew I'd been IED'd. I didn't know I was buried. Private Hayes was a member of the Royal Anglian Regiment. Today they marched in Norwich to mark their return from their latest tour in Afghanistan. Recording a verdict of unlawful killing, Coroner William Morris said there was no evidence to suggest that any equipment had been faulty. He said Private Hayes' family should be very proud, just as we in this country are very grateful to him. Stuart Leith's Anglia News, Wisbeach. It's emerged that a serial killer who murdered a teenager from Essex could have murdered more victims. Peter Tobin was convicted of murdering 18-year-old Dinah McNichol from Tillingham last December. Now, detectives investigating his life say they're likely to reveal more suspected victims over the coming months. A UK-wide inquiry is attempting to piece together information on his whereabouts over the years to see if he could be linked to other crimes. The German doctor who gave a pensioner from Cambridgeshire a fatal overdose of painkiller has been struck off the medical register today. Dr Daniel Lubani was on his first ever shift in the UK when he killed David Gray from Maney near Chatteris in February 2008. The General Medical Council said it had grave concerns over his competence. He remains free to practice in his home country despite today's ruling. A doctor's surgery in Essex has been taken into NHS control after complaints about the service from patients. The Green Elm Surgery in Jaywick is currently run by a private healthcare firm, but now the Primary Care Trust is ending their contract at the end of the month. Here's Tom Barton. It was business as usual at the Green Elms Medical Centre in Jaywick today. No sign that the NHS contract with private healthcare provider Chilvers McCree had been ended three years early. We spoke to Chilvers McCree today and they didn't want to comment other than to confirm that from the beginning of next month they'll no longer be running this surgery. A surgery which, according to the local MP, has long been unpopular with the people of Jaywick. There were all sorts of complaints about pretty basic things like prescriptions, about being able to get to see a doctor on time. Um, what I do know is that I've probably received more complaints about this one GP surgery in the past year than I received in relation to every other GP surgery in the constituency over the previous five years. It's been a difficult practice to uh, manage and provide for, for for many years and in particular it's been very challenging to recruit doctors to work uh, in the practice for long periods of time. So what we're doing is we're putting in a new arrangement which will involve working with a consortium of local GPs um, who will be able to uh, ensure that there are doctors to work uh, in the practice consistently. In just a few weeks' time, new doctors and new managers will be in place here. Local people hope that means they'll also receive a new level of service. Tom Barton, Anglia News, Jaywick. Two town centre police stations in Suffolk are due to close as part of a merger with the council. Police will now share offices with the county council, creating a one-stop shop for public services in Ipswich. Both organisations say it'll help save money in these tighter times, but not everyone's happy, as Victoria Webb now explains. It's a building that's in need of a lot of work. It's claimed it would cost millions to bring Ipswich Police Station up to a basic standard. So the opportunity to move into new premises and share the cost with Suffolk County Council was too good to miss. 
From 2013, many functions of the police station will transfer to St Edmund House on the corner of Rope Walk and Grimwade Street, where they will share with some county council departments. Other staff will move to Landmark House on the edge of town or to police headquarters in Martlesham. I don't think they should get rid of it, you know. Um, maybe refurbish a building or put a new building there, but not get rid of it completely. If you find anything in the street, you have to hand it into the police station. If you've got to go and look for it, you're reluctant to do that. Personally, I don't have a major issue with them shutting that if they still provide the service um, and they've got a presence on the street. Woodbridge Police Station will also close, although safer neighbourhood teams will be based close to the town centre. The changes will mean around £500,000 of savings a year. With future cuts in funding expected, the police and the county council say they have to adapt to continue delivering a good service to the people of Suffolk. Victoria Webb, Anglia News, Ipswich.